that is going better than the last year. But let's see. Uh, right. Now, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say about next October, November, uh, yeah, yeah, next yeah. month. Yeah. Let's see. Now, hopefully, it won't be so bad like uh, last year. Uh, I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> I also don't know. Last year it was pretty. Last year, what you were saying? I mean, last summer it was pretty bad in India. Yeah, I mean, last. Oh, I mean, 2021. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 2020 was better in some sense. Yeah. 21 was, was yeah. Uh, more devastating. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. Because anyway, so it's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so welcome back, everyone. So it is a great pleasure to have. Uh, Gianluca Farako from Max Planck Institute, Bonn. Uh, so Gianluca will tell us about uh, fundamental domains. Uh, regular tessellations, but I know that yeah, the screen is not shared. Gianluca will tell us about tessellations of uh, several spaces. So I over to okay. Gianluca. Hopefully, yeah, thanks. So thanks, Richnando, for the introduction and thanks the organizer for inviting me here to give this talk and other ones. So today I'm going, going to tell you about regular tessellations. So the first point is, what do we mean with a tessellation? So tessellation, you can think, so in tessellation, can be seen as, uh, a tiling of a surface given by polygons. So at the very beginning, one can think to tile plane. Let, okay, if you want to have an example in mind, let's think of the Euclidean plane. The solution, you, basically you tile this plane, the, the Euclidean plane with this polygon, but at the very beginning, you don't require these polygons to be uh, congruent to each other. And, and now I'll show you immediately an example of this phenomenon. So this one, I hope you can see this call is known as Penrose tessellations. Penrose. The same Penrose who won the Nobel Prize the last year. So this, this is just our part, but this can be extended to a to a tessellation of the Euclidean, uh, the Euclidean plane, so R2. There are basically two types of polygons, both are quadrilaterals, but there are the orange one and the red one. So each pair of orange polygons or part of orange quadrilaterals are congruent. Each pair of red quadrilaterals are also congruent, but if you pick one orange and one red, these are not congruent at all. So or if you want, they are not isometric, if you want to think about isometries. So in our case today, we will restrict to special case of so-called regular tessellations. And what do we mean? And we mean exactly um, uh, division of a geometric surface into non-overlapping congruent polygons we serve and these polygons are just called tiles So some very standard example in first examples of tessellations you can have in mind, and so given in R2, so you can paint. One is given by, you subdivide R2 in squares, but there are others. So there is one given by regular hexagons and B is like this one. Or you can also have a tessellation given by equilateral triangles. Well, we would like to have a, also a notion of symmetry. 
So symmetries. What do we mean? Let's go back to the Penrose distillation once again. So here you, there are many symmetries in this sense. So if you pick this polygon, or maybe it's better if I use another color like white, this polygon here, then this can, this can be mapped to some other polygons like this one. And this, and you can do this by using an isometry of the European plane. And this exometry extends globally. So it moves the tessellation to the tessellation itself. So, um, but what happens, it happens that this is not exactly what we want. This is not good in the sense that, as I told you before, here we have two, two different kinds of tiles and there is no way for mapping an orange one to the red one. But there is another kind of phenomenon. So sometimes you can even, uh, map one tile to another one, but the isometry you use don't extend to uh, to the entire tessellation. That does not preserve the tessellation. So let now make this idea precise. So what do we mean with symmetry? And now I give you another couple of examples. So uh, tessellation D is symmetric. If any tile T1 can be mapped to a tile T2 by an isometry, uh, which maps? Uh, the old capital T, so the old tessellation to itself. Well, if you consider again this picture above, so this one, then if you pick any square, this is a tile, you can map this square to another one, so to the radius sense, but you can also map this one to this one here by using a translation. And this translation translates all the other tiles to tiles. So the translation itself is preserved. The same kind of phenomenon happens here. So suppose you want to move this hexagon to the next one, then the entire translation goes to the, to the translation. Um, before I uh, just give you an example with the Penrose tiling, but, but in that case, um, we have two different types of polygons. So one may wonder, if we have all, I mean, all polygons are congruent, so all squares, all triangles, or whatever, uh, does, it, this, does this mean that this is symmetric? The answer is no. I give you an example of this now. You can consider, uh, it's a little bit difficult to draw, so I hope it will be clear. Something like, um, like this, and okay. Uh, okay, the, all triangles are supposed to be congruent, even if pictorially they don't look at, they don't look like congruent at all. And now let's think something like that here, something like this. And so on, this continues in the same fashion. And so on. So what happens? Do we have an, uh, an isometry? So if you consider this style here, T1, the green one, and now the red one is the second tile. Is there an isometry mapping the red tile to the white, uh, to the red tile to the green one? The answer is yes. I mean, it's just for you, it's just sufficient to pick a reflection along this line. But what happens now, the tessellation in itself doesn't go to the tessellation because this triangle here that I, I use gray go to somewhat here. And so the tessellation is not preserved. This is not what we call symmetric. There are symmetries because of course, if you translate along this direction, you preserve the tessellation, but it's not symmetric because you, what you want is that any tile can be mapped to a, 
another tile, and the solution has to be preserved. So this example is not symmetric. These are both uh, symmetric. Other examples are given by, oh, no, I'm just give you examples on R2, but one can also consider a sphere. So the most, oh, sorry, I want to use black. So the most uh, familiar constellations of S2 uh, come from regular polydra. And we come back on this soon. All regular tessellations in R2 come from square, uh, equilateral triangle, and hexagon. There are no other possibilities. Well, no, there is a fact. So it might happen. It might happen that a non trivial symmetry maps a given tile to itself. Very simple example. So let me use gray now. Okay, whatever I'm drawing, this is supposed to be a square. So, you know, there are eight symmetries for the square given by here, given by reflections on this axis that you can see in black and dashed. So if you, if you apply a symmetry, if you apply reflection on R2 by, one of these axes, what do you do? You preserve the tessellation. So suppose that now here we have a regular tessellation given by square that continues in this way, and so on. So the tessellation in itself is preserved, but when you reflect, for instance, suppose that you are reflecting along this axis, this square that I can, goes to itself. So there is a what's so called stabilizer. Basically, here the definition of stabilizer is the same that we here gave before. So there are there is a there are some there is a subgroup. I mean, so there are symmetries. Let me call this square um, S one. There are symmetries that fix. S1. Uh, be careful, they fix S1 not pointwise. They just fix S1 as a tile, as a square. Because symmetries, I call you that are given by isometries. Isometries are analytical map. I mean, they are analytic. So if they fix the square pointwise, it means that this is the identity. So they fix the square not pointwise, but the square is fixed. So not pointwise. And so, there is a group of symmetries fixing S1. And this is a destabilizer of S1. So something that perhaps I, I should have mentioned before, um, all symmetries, okay, okay, let, let me write that properly because it's important. So given E tessellation, all symmetries, as you might expect, 
um, form a group gamma and destabilizer of S1 that we can call is just a subgroup. Of course, this subgroup is very specific to the, the square S, uh, to the square S1. If I if I want to consider this other tile, this other square, the stabilizer, the stabilizer is different, but it's conjugate. So all stabilizer in this case is conjugate. What we would like, however, um, so what we can do, one can subdivide a tessellation so that the symmetry group generated by symmetries um, is the same. So we won't change the symmetry group, but with the very key property that only one symmetry maps a tile T1 to a tile T2. And what happens? If T1 is equal to T2, then these symmetries is nothing but the identity is the identity. So here, let, let, let me go back to this uh, picture here. So suppose we have these two squares as one and as two. So we, we, there is a symmetry we can translate, we, there is a translation, we can apply translation, so we can use this color. And this maps S1 to S2, but we can also compose this translation with some symmetry of the square S1 for, uh, sorry, pre-compose. And what happens, S1 still goes to S2 and we have provided two different symmetries. And this is because we have just pre-composed this translation with some element of the stabilizer of the square S1. What we are, so in general, given two ties, if, if one style has non-trivial stabilizer, then there are given two ties T1, T2, you can find more than one, uh, symmetries mapping T1 to T2. But we have proper subdivisions of the tiling. We can make sure that the only, uh, given two ties T1, T2, T2, there is only one symmetry that works. And in particular, this means that, as I said, that when T1 is equal to T2, we have the identity. Well, so I use again the, the square tessellation as, um, example that you can keep in mind. So this is the square tessellation. So suppose we have now we have divided. So we have this subdivision given by this way here, 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 and then okay. So let's pick this, this triangle and we call this T naught. So, uh, sorry, T capital T is, might be misleading, T naught. So we can choose a tile T naught uh, such that as a, um, uh, what do say? Okay, so what happens? So let me say this first. We said that for any two ties, there is only one symmetry mapping T1 to T2. So we can choose a tile T0 that corresponds, say quote, corresponds to the identity. And then any other tile, 
Ti can be seen as an element G of my Ti of my of the group of symmetries. What do what do I mean? I mean that, that Ti is nothing but Ti of T naught. And now we know that G I is unique because we have this subdivision is made such that for n two ties there is only one symmetry bring one to another. So definition T naught is a fundamental domain or fundamental region, as you wish. Fundamental domain or fundamental region. And so this is a, some sense there is a bijection between tilings, oh, sorry, tiling, ties of uh, my tiling and the group G. Uh, this T naught, this fundamental domain depends on a choice, which choice? The my initial choice, the T naught has any one of these triangles, any one of these tiles. What happens if I choose another one? It, uh, nothing in the sense that any triangle in this picture, but any, uh, when you have this particular subdivision, any type can be seen as a fundamental region. So it can be think like the identity and then all the others are, corresponds to elements of my group. And there is a conjugation to relate them. Now, remark something that at some point came out in some reading group. Gamma contains orientation uh, reversing isometries. However, sometimes, actually most often, it's useful to consider the subgroup orientation preserving isometries that we can call with gamma plus. And this is a subgroup of index two. So it depends on what you want to do. Basically, most of the times, what we actually we consider is just this guy here. And this is a subgroup of index two. An example of this is, is was seen in some previous lectures, uh, even in Gamma's talk. So if you're given, for instance, in H2, the hyperbolic plane, you're given triangle. pi by r, pi by q, pi by p. And so the triangle group p, q, r, sometimes is considered as the subgroup of index two of the group of isometries generated by this triangle. But here, one just consider the group generated by reflections along the sides of this triangle. Well, any questions, Par? Okay, so there is a basic question. Which polygons P occur as fundamentals regions for a group gamma. Well, there is a theorem. There is a theorem that says that if gamma x on S2, R2, or H2, which are respectively the spherical plane, or elliptic plane, um, Euclidean plane or the hyperbolic plane, and the action is supposed to be discontinuous. So discontinuously T uh, with 
fundamental region. And gamma uh, orientation reversing element such that P section BP is not empty. So basically you have something like a, a triangle case. This is P and this is BP, and this is just the reflection here. Then P union BP is a fundamental reason Or gamma plus. Okay, so this says that when once you have a uh, domain for gamma, you can find domain for gamma plus, but we are still remaining with when does such a p exist? So when does p exist? And this basically we comes back to something that also Lilima said the last time. So there are this called side and angle. Condition, conditions. So the first one is for any side S side in P. So it's a thing that this, if you want to kind of prototypical example, just give, just think of the square tessellation of R2. So this is my side S. For any side, uh, there exists, there exists. Uh, side S prime in P such that S is equal to G S prime for G in gamma. Uh, remark, be, be careful, S prime could be equal to S is allowed. When does this, con this happen? So if you have some triangle, and this is P and this is PP. So here there is a vertex, but this seems a fake vertex. And this side here is identified with this side. So if you forget the fake vertex, so if you forget the uh, dashed line, and you just look at this triangle, this side that I can call from, this side AB goes to itself, but there's a rotation of order two. So G is non-trivial, but S is equal to S prime. And second condition, uh, the angle sum of the identified vertices, identified vertices is two pi by P where P is a positive integer. Well, these are conditions. So now we move to what we really care, what is most important for us in this long year program. And we talk about triangles, triangle tessellations. And soon we go back to the case of the sphere. So basically, we start with this triangle. Let me throw this again. Pi by P, pi by Q, pi by R, and it's my triangle P, and we double it. We double it. So what we get? We get something like seems more like a kite now. pi by p, here we have now two pi by q, two pi by r, and here again we have pi by p. Um, so this can be seen now as a quadrilateral. So the one from the triangle tessellation, you can think this quadra quadrilateral tessellation and such uh, triangulation, Okay, it would be more proper tessellations. Tessellation exists. 
And according to the surface and values, E, Q, and R. What do I mean? There is this um, quantity that something that you will you already had encountered that, but you will encounter many other times for sure. One plus oh sorry, one by P plus one by Q plus one by R is it has to be greater than one, and it's two exactly equal to one in R2 less than one on H2. So this is a spherical case, planar case, and hyperbolic case. So this case here basically has been described by Lima the last time. So today we are mostly interested on in these other two cases, but actually they are all related. So it is an easy matter that to show that this inequality is satisfied for infinitely many triples. So fact, one by P plus one by Q plus one by R less than one is satisfied by infinitely many triples. And say that the uh, minimal one, minimal one, is two, three, seven. I'll show you a picture later of this. Uh, actually, I'll show you immediately this picture. Here. Here we have the triangulation of the hyperbolic plane given by the triangle group, two, three, seven. So this can be seen. So now I hope you can see this yellow. Here we start with this triangle, this is a hyperbolic triangle. And here we, so this vertex here is right. So it corresponds to two. Here we have pi by three and pi by seven. Um, so you can see this, that, that triangulation comes from a regular heptagon in the hyperbolic plane. And this heptagon can, from the, from the given heptagon, you can tessellate the entire hyperbolic plane this way. And then you can continue and so on. So this is just this is the only example I show you about the hyperbolic case because it was already treated by Nguyen. So let's go back here. Let's consider spherical case. So we, there is a table that one can write. It's not difficult. So one case is two, two, and, and at least two, and it's called dihedron. Uh, this can be seen like a sphere. The hydron bigger there are two faces. So you can see a sphere and with an equator, and the equator is divided in n different um, edges. But this is the less interesting case for us. Then there are other cases two, three, three. This is the tetrahedron, tetrahedron, two, this three seems. One, five, two, three, four is corresponding to cube or octahedron. And finally, two, three, and five, they correspond to dodecahedron or icosahedron. What, what, equals, uh, what do I mean? I mean that if you think the regular, there are five regular polyhedras. This one, you can see these five regular polyhedrons. You know, in the in dimension two, for any n uh, greater than three, uh, sorry, greater than two, there is a n regular polygon. But when you increase the dimension by one, so in dimension three, there are exactly five regular polyhedrons. And that is this uh, tetrahedron, cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, and 
I consider. So you can think now. Let's 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 pick your favorite uh, polyhedron, and you can think, say say let's okay let's say this one. You can use. Okay. You can think this regular polyhedron to be embedded in a tree, and this polyhedron has a center of gravity is, is the center. And then you can consider a sphere center at the same point and with radius given by distance from the center to one of the vertices. What happens? It happens that now we have a sphere in a tree and that circumscribe my regular polyhedron that is sometimes contained here. Now this is just two dimensional picture, but it's the same kind of phenomenon. And now what you, what you can think, so let's say, I can try to draw something better. So uh, this is the sphere. Suppose you have one triangle, use another color. One triangle. No. Uh, okay, I have, sorry for this. Day. I'm not going to try dimensional pictures. Okay, something like this. Oh. And so this, this is this is supposed to be. Oh. I want this to be a um, like Euclidean something like that. And now I can draw this other one. Okay, this is correct now. So what happened? We have the green the green triangle is just a face. In, okay, just draw a triangle because a pentagon was too difficult for me. So you can think instead of the dodecahedron, you can think that uh, uh, we have this icosahedron embedded in our uh, tree and there is a sphere circumscribed to the to the icosahedron so that all the vertices are tangent are included in my sphere. And now just consider one face. This is just a, it's a something flat because I'm considering something with polyhedron in a tree. And what happens now if you have a bulb here, some light source? When if you have this light source, this triangle is projected to the sphere. So this black triangle, black triangle that's uh, what edges are uh, carved because it's used some spherical geometry, is just the shadow of the green one from this light source. So if you think now to have some light source inside this guy, and you look at the projection, the shadow given by this light source. Uh, uh, center, the center of gravity of my polyhedron, then you can see a, um, something like a subdivision, a tiling of the sphere. What are the tilings now? These tilings are pentagons because one face is a pentagon and the projection is a pentagon. Uh, it happens, if you use the icosahedron, then the, you, so you have all faces are triangles. But now, eco, the icosahedron and these two guys, so the icosahedron and the dodecahedron, are dual. One is the dual of the other. What do I mean? I mean that if you consider the center, so let me erase here now this that source. If you consider the, cent, the, face, the center of each face and you join them, and you join them, you get exactly a um, icosahedron inside. You get you join them in all possible way. And same play, if you play the same game starting from an icosahedron, so you can see the centers of each face and you join them, then you draw, uh, you, you get the decahedron. This can be seen here. This is an icosahedron, so icosahedron. Uh, this may be the origami, something funny to, to do, but so. This inside this dodecahedron, so I think that you can convince yourself this is an icosahedron. 
But here you can somehow recognize the, the dodecahedron. How? If you look at if you look at this edges here, then okay, you will say that these are uh, ten gone. That's true. But look at this point here. So basically, we have two faces, and these are two. These are bent. So you can unbend them, make it flat. Okay. And so if you consider, so if you forget then these vertices in some sense, you can see something that is called, that is a pentagon. Basically the idea is that you can cut out this tip, you can cut out this tip and then what do you get? You get some pentagonal face, something, something that now is flat. And if you do the same with these others, here there are other 12. And so, from this icosahedron, you can get the dodecahedron. And one can also, no, don't, I didn't find an origami with an, uh, an icosahedron on it, the web, but the point is that uh, one can also play the game in the other way around. And now it's nice because these two regular polyhedron, they induce the same triangulation. Because if you recall here, I just told you that icosahedron and uh, dodecahedron, they induce the two, three, five triangulation. They basically induce this triangulation. Oh, sorry. They induce this triangulation here. So here you can recognize the pentagon in this case. Right? Why do they induce the same? For this reason. So now you, you can use a little bit your imagination to um, subdivide each faces in triangles like this. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six triangles. Here we have two pi by six that becomes pi by three. Here we have two pi by four. So this guy here is pi by, mm, okay, maybe what, this, what I'm saying is slightly misleading, sorry. So here we have, okay, so let's start from this guy. This two pi divided in six. So this is two pi by six, this pi by three. Let me use black. Pi by three. Here we have two pi divided in four, so pi by two. Now, if you think uh, this is just a kind of Euclidean geometry, but you can convince yourself this is nothing but pi by five. And so we have this, this kind of triangulation. Um, if you start with a um, pentagon, so but as, it, as I said to you before, here you can recognize both the the triangle, both the dodecahedron and the, the, the icosahedron. So if I continue this subdivision for all the faces, so I continue in the same fashion this way, it doesn't matter if I start with an icosahedron or a dodecahedron. I get the same kind of triangulation. And you can also make a count. So here the icosahedron has 20 faces, right? For each face, we get six triangles. So 20 times six is one, 120. If you start with a dodecahedron, we have pentagonal faces. Each face is divided in 10. And 10, oh, sorry, 10 times 12 is once again, 120. So at the end of the story, they, they yield the same triangulation on the sphere that you can see exactly here. If here it comes, so here we are, it's easier to recognize the triangle, the pentagon. Now I just give you, I just explain you what happens in these two cases, but the same, exactly the same happens for these two. Why? Because the cube and the octahedron are one is the dual of the other. So if you have this cube and then you join uh, the midpoints in this way, you get a noctahedron inside. The only one who is left is the tetrahedron, but uh, now I think that you can understand why 
because there are just four faces and here inside I just recognize another tetrahedron pointing on the other way around. So in the day, tetrahedron is as a polyhedron is auto dual. Well, so this is about a spherical triangulation. Let me now consider very quickly again, the last time today, triangulations in R2. So there's the case three, 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 uh, given by equilateral triangles, equilateral triangles, two, four, four, coming from the square. And finally, two, three, six, coming from regular hexagon. And these are the only possible cases. That's something you can, you can go, I mean, you can just consider this equation and you can see there are finitely many solutions and that are up to permutations, of course, because if you change the role of PQR, then uh, you, get, you get the same triple, so up to permutation. Well, finally, uh, just want to say something about, uh, because I'm just, just talk about how to triangulate uh, the subtilization of R2, R2 as two and the hyperbolic plane is two. So what we can do about surfaces. Now, um, so there is this notion of Riemann surface or complex manifold that only you and me here recall. But this is also related with smooth, smooth algebraic R. So a Riemann surface X, that's some complex or something, complex analysis, can be related with some equations as W in uh, C2 or its compatibilization. Then these are, these are polynomial, right? So this is a polynomial. And now definition, X is Galois belly, or sometimes also is also called belly cars. This is a matter of terminology. If this polynomial FZW is defined over that's a bright closure of Q. Sometimes when some other people say some uh, number field, a number fields, they are containing Q bar. So the belly theorem, belly theorem says that X, X is a Riemann surface is a belly, car, car, if, if there exists a non-constant holomorphic function, say beta from x to cp1 branched at B points, zero, one, and infinity. Uh, this is not restrictive in the sense that if, if you have a map beta prime that branches some three points, zeta one, zeta two, and zeta three, and then you can apply some maybe transformations. And so you can consider that zero, one, and infinity. So this is not restrictive at all. And such a map, so such a map, such a morphic function exists if and only if our Riemann surface is a belly card. That means if and only if uh, this card, this Riemann surface, or, or if you want, or better to say, the associated algebraic right card. There's not a Riemann surface. Sorry? Devendra, did you say something? Uh, there's not a belly and belly are the same. I don't hear you properly. What are you saying? What did you say? Belly curve and Galva belly curve are same thing or different? Yeah, same, same. Just a matter of terminology. Yeah, sorry. Because some people say Galva belly curve, 
other people say belly car. So basically it's a, you know, sometimes this kind of technology is not standard. I mean, there are also other technology like positive platonic surfaces, but few people use them. I mean, uh, they are more special. Sorry? Galva belly are more special than belly curve. Is it more? Yeah. Okay, so. But this is true for belly cars for sure. So yeah, but this is also true. For, this is also true for okay. So for me, Galois belly was the same, but yeah, that's uh, as I was saying, it's a matter of terminology. Let's say just belly. So forget Galois belly cars. Now, so for the sphere, we already know which kind of triangulations we have. I mean, they come from uh, regular poly regular polyhedrons. So in the case of circular genus one, so for the torus, there are triangulations coming from squares or hexagon triangulations. So the interesting case is when G is at least two. And in this case, there is a theorem by Wolfert. This is that X is belly, uh, the following are equivalent. X is belly. X as everyone surface that can be seen as H2 mod gamma. And gamma is a co compact torsion free function group. Function groups has been introduced last time by Nilimas. Um, Who's normalizer in PSL two R triangle group? And X admits non trivial symmetries. Uh, so what's the point here? So basically the, the idea behind is that suppose you have this mapping X from CP, from X to CP1 branched at zero, one and infinity. And we, and uh, suppose ramification indices are PQR. Then we can apply Riemann Jurvitz, and this says that two times G, the genus of X minus two is equal to D, but D is the degree of my mapping beta, one minus one minus R. And so this happens that if whenever this guy is negative here, implies the genus of X is at least two. And so now we have, so we have this PQR group. So we have this um, on, the, on the hyperbolic plane. So we can, can we have this triangulation and this pulls back to a triangulation on my surface. That's the idea, the very idea behind. And um, okay, I think I'll stop here for today. So yeah, let's stop. <laughs> yes, thank you very much for a nice talk. Uh, any questions are there? Anybody wants to ask any question? Hi, Gianluca. Is, do you yeah. mean GX is at least one or like greater than or equal to one? Or it is really two? Um, I mean, if it depends on second. I mean, the what I mean, the lower threshold should be one, I guess, or? Hey, if these are, if this quantity is negative, then the genus has to be two. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. this is what I'm saying. I, here, I was, I put myself in genus two. 
Uh-huh. But yeah, I mean, but this, I mean, this, this is this is true more than I mean. Of, you're right. If you think that this, if this is one, yeah, uh, this, I mean that means that this is zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, the genus has to be one, and if this is positive, the genus has to be zero. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. true. That's in- perfectly fine. Yeah, because I just put myself in the genus, at, the genus at least two. Just okay. Yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, it was. Yeah, but you are right. Thanks for pointing me out. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Okay, I think Krishnamurti, can you? Comments. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Yeah, we are Hello. hearing you, Krishnandu. Yeah, we are hearing. Yeah, you. yeah. So I was disconnected actually. Uh-huh. There was some internet issues. Yeah. So you can continue. Yeah. So Jitendra, well, we were managing now when I was away. No. Sorry. Oh. I didn't know that you were away. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, know, I, I was this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so okay. I saw. So yeah, anyways, yeah. Anyways, yeah. So anyways, Krishnantu yeah. is uh, asking that if there are any more questions, if there are no more questions, let's unmute ourselves for a second and thank the speaker. Yes, we thank the speaker. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you yeah. for being here. Thanks, thanks for a lovely talk. So, uh, yeah. But Gianluca, I yeah. must say that before I went for this uh, internet problem, before the internet problem occurred, I think your lecture was pretty good. I really thanks, thanks. I like the picture. I would say that you are a fantastic. You draw beautiful pictures by hand. I mean, that's amazing. Pictures yeah. are not mine. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, no, no, but, but you, 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 draw, you draw some of them, no? Ah, yeah, yeah, here, yeah, yeah, the very beginning. Yeah. yeah, okay, so, yeah, maybe here, something, was, something like that. that was, okay, I think it's not really a little bit. Uh, beautiful picture. There is no more question? Yes. Maybe, uh, yeah. Yeah, we stop now. Okay, I think, I think that is getting freezing. Yeah. Yeah.